Hi booktube, I'm back with my bookshelf tour. Uh, we're doing the second half. This is the first half, this is the second half of my red bookshelf. Um, except all the books on the shelf are not red. There's a reason for that um, that I will explain. And we're just gonna hop right into it and start at the top shelf. So I'm gonna apologize for the little shaky camera because my tripod doesn't go that high. I have this really cool lamp thing. Um, yeah, it's just like a troll. <laughs> uh, we have some eyeballs. We have Darwin and Sherlock. I actually got that Darwin doll at a church garage sale. I thought that was funny. And this little monk dude. And behind there are all my old books. Um, I will put a link to an old books video that I've done. I'm showing them off because I can't... I can't hold the camera and reach up there. But they're uh, old books from like the... 18th century or 19th century. I think that one up there is my oldest book at like 1800s. So, um, this is Shake Hands with the Devil by Romeo Dallier. It's about the genocide in Rwanda. He was the head of the UN um, contingency that was sent there to uh, try and stop the genocide but um, ultimately failed. Then we have The Familiar, Volume 1, by Mark Z. Donalewski. Um, House of Leaves is missing from my shelf because it's wrapped up for a TBR. Um, but this is one of his other books. Um, it's a Mark Z. Donalewski book. It's experimental. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool inside. Robertson Davies' Fifth Business, Canadian classic. I didn't like it when I first read it in high school, but now it's one of my, one of my all-time favorites. Uh, and then we here <laughs> have the... Um, Horrible Histories um, by Terry Deary and there's one here that's a Canadian one. Here it is. And this is by um, Claire McKay, but I put it with the rest of the Horrible Histories with Terry Deary because it's a horrible history. So first for folks in Val Vil Vile Voyagers, um, England, Dark Nights and Dingy Castles, The Measly Middle Ages, Edinburgh, um, the Vicious Vikings, and this one, The Groovy Greeks and the Rotten Romans. Well, then we have another one of my favorite books, A Strange Manuscript Found in a Copper Cylinder by James DeMille. Philip K. Dick, The Smulkra. Um, I recently read this um, book. Uh, then we have The Brief Wonders Life of Oscar Wow by Juno Diaz. I know there's problems with him, but this book was really good, and I read that before that was known. Um, so yeah, this is really good look at uh, history, but told through a personal lens. And then we have Blade Runner, or Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep, as the book is called. Um, yeah, by Philip K. Dick. Um, so we have the Sherlock Holmes Puzzle Collection and the Sherlock Holmes Companion. Um, they're not by, you know, they're not organized by author, but they're with my Sherlock um, collection. Back here, what's this little edition? Oh, this is a Christmas Carol by uh, Charles Dickens. I have read, however, The Collected Poems of Emily Dickinson. Um, I wasn't very good at keeping my um, dust jackets before. Uh, I'm not too good at it now um, either, to be honest. We have The Marrow Thieves by uh, Cherie Demelain. This was a Canada Reads pick uh, one year, and I read it on ebook, but then I found the physical copy um, at a thrift store, I believe. Um, really good dystopian fiction by uh, Owned Voices author, um, Indigenous. Then we have Poor Folk by Dostoevsky. Um, not his best work, but interesting nonetheless. Uh, Crime and Punishment, which has been read many times. There's notes crammed all on the pages there. Um, not nearly as annotated as my brother's Kramazov, which I don't think I'll ever shelf. I'll just constantly keep that on my desk. Um, A Treasury of Sherlock Holmes, um, this naked hardback. This one is supposed to be naked, um, the memoirs of Sherlock Holmes. I really like that copy. Is it? No, not Gilded Edges, but still nice. Um, the Count of Monte Cristo, you can see that spine there. It's all taped together. Um, I gotta reread this sometime. It's been a while, but it's one of my all time favorite books. Then we have Geek Love by Catherine Dunn. This book is a trip and a half, let me tell you that. It's about a, a circus family, and the parents purposely do stuffs to their body so that, while, they're, while she's pregnant, so that they give birth to. Um, what would be called freaks at the time. Um, yeah, <laughs> really messed up. And then a heartbreaking work of Staggering Genius by Dave Eggers. I haven't read this in such a long time, but I remember this was like my first piece of literary fiction and thinking like, this is actually really, really good. 
Um, so I gotta go back and read that. I have read more Dave Eggers, as we're gonna see in just one second. Uh, more Dave Eggers here, as I said. Uh, you Shall Know Our Velocity. I actually read this while on a trip, and just the experience um, is linked forever in my mind um, with that. Uh, another Dave Eggers book. This one is probably my favorite by him. Your Fathers, Where Are They? and The Prophets, Do They Live Forever? This is an advanced reader's copy. Um, and I actually found this in a little free library. Um, and grabbed it out of my aunt's hands. I'm glad because I don't think my aunt would would have appreciated this because <laughs> um, it's very liberal. Um, it's about a man who kidnaps people um, because his life is going wrong and he just wants to ask them why his life has gone so bad. Some T.S. Eliot, Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats, which the um, musical Cats is based on. And then we have The Complete Poems and Plays, um, 1909 to 1950. And we have my Malazan, the three that I've read, Gardens of the Moon, um, Dead House Gates and Memories of Ice. Um, these books, like, I thought this one was good, and this one was better, but this one just blew them all out of the water. It's an amazing series. Then I have As I Lay Dying by William Faulkner. Um, but it's Faulkner. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about him besides that you should really read him. The Unvanquished is really good. It's really, it's more, one of his more straightforward novels. Then we have one of my favorite Canadian authors, Will Ferguson. This is, uh, Generica, but it's also known as Happiness, I believe. Um, and it's about a um, self-help book that actually works, and it causes the apocalypse. And then lastly, uh, Jasper Ford's uh, Shades of Grey. Don't read this if you aren't happy with unsatisfying endings, because this is supposed to be a trilogy, and it's been years! Oh, up here we have The Great Gatsby, of course, with that iconic cover there. This is one of my all-time favorite books, um, Richard Flanagan's Gold Book of Fish. It's about a prisoner in early Australia and um, he's forced to um, illustrate a book of fish. Um, but it's about so much more than that. It's amazing. Amazing book. Um, this is my favorite book from last year. Um, so I listened to an audiobook and then brought this little hardcover back. And it's so soft. It's like cloth bound and it's covered in cat hair like everything is. Um, this is Janet Frame's Owls Do Cry, which is about a woman with schizophrenia. And then we have Anne Frank's The Diary of a Young Girl. Um, Stephen Fry, um, The Liar. Um, I don't know why I didn't hold on to all the other books by him. Um, and this is a book that I set down and um, haven't finished yet. Um, but we have Ink Heart and Ink Spell by Cornelia Funke. These are beautiful. These are supposed to be naked hardbacks. Um, about a uh, family who can read people out of books. Like if they read it out loud, the someone or something from that book will come to our world and something from our world will get sent into the books. It's amazing. I haven't read Ink Death yet. I unfortunately think it's wrapped on my shelf somewhere. American Gods by Neil Gaiman. Um, this isn't the copy I read. I actually read a copy my friend lent me, so um, this is still in nice condition. Uh, another Neil Gaiman and Nancy Boys. Then we have Coraline by Neil Gaiman. And lastly, Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. Um, here we have Pikachu, um, just hanging out. More Neil Gaiman, <laughs> The Ocean at the End of the Lane. I have The Treasured Writings of Khalil Gibran. Um, I've read The Prophet and a few other short pieces in here. Um, his writing is very beautiful. He's a um, Muslim um, poet. Then we have Neuromancer by William Gibson. This is one of the first ever um, cyberpunk um, novels. Uh, the Princess Bride by William Goldman. I actually got to teach this book too, uh, to a grade 12 class, and it was so much fun. I got some Graham Greene. Uh, the first one I read by him was Our Man in Havana, um, for a film class actually, in uh, university. And then I read The Quiet American uh, just last year, um, and it was interesting. Um, he writes about like spies and stuff like that. Then we have The Brothers Grimm, The Complete Fairy Tales, and I believe this one is uh, there's some illustrations. Not very many, but there are a few. What's that? The Hare's Bride. Pretty cool. Um, Samba by Alma, uh, I'm not gonna try and pronounce that name, you can see it there. Um, and this is a non-fiction book about, uh, Samba. The Dodecahedron, or A Frame for Frames by Paul Glennon. This is a series of short stories that are all interconnected in weird ways. Um, either through a phase, character, themes. Um, and it's really quite fascinating. This is a really good collection. Then I read Fat by Rob Grant, and um, this is where being fat is made illegal, and talking about um, body image um, and science and all this other really cool stuff. It really made me look at things differently. Um, we Have Always Been Here by Samra Habib. 
Um, this is about her being uh, queer and Muslim um, in Canada. I believe this was another Canada Read selection. I found this at a library uh, sale and I absolutely love um, discarded hardback library books with the plastic on them. They're just like my favorite. <laughs> um, this is one of my favorite books too, Cockroach. It's about a man um, dealing with mental illness. We have Roots by Alex Haley. I actually listened to this on audiobook. It's an American classic. We have some Thomas Hardy. This is Jude the Obscure. Um, one of my this is my favorite Thomas Hardy. Um, I think it's the only one I've read actually uh, about a young man who wants more in life. Then we have Seven Years in Tibet by Heinrich Herr. And this is about an Austrian man who um, stays in Tibet during World War II and just makes a life for himself there. Then we have Even If It Kills Me by Dorothy Joan Harris and this was from I, th I was in grade 8 um, when me and my friends all read this. Um, not through school, but um, by our own choice, a little girl with a uh, eating disorder. Robert Heinlein's A Stranger in a Strange Land, uh, one of the only books I've actually liked by him. Witch 22 by Joseph Heller, a classic. Winter's Tale by Mark Halprin. This is another book that I've read most of and I set it down, I just haven't picked it back up again. But it's so beautiful that I think my hesitation is that I don't want it to end. The Old Man and the Sea by Ernest Hemingway. A Canadian classic here, Maria Chapdelaine by um, Louis Himon, and this is actually about a girl who wants to marry um, this really young man, and uh, she hears that if you say uh, 99 Hail Marys, um, you'll get your wish to come true. Here we have um, The Illustrated Dune by Frank Herbert, um, which has these full page prints in them, um, which is really cool. Maybe when I reread it, I'll reread this one. I'm um, just look at all the pictures in it. Okay, um, so no, that is not a baby Yoda. <laughs> that is actually just a little Yoda crammed in there. Moving Pictures by Terry Pratchett. I adore um, Terry Pratchett, um, so that's nice to see there. Monkey Beach by Eden Robinson. I read that in November, I believe. That's a really good story about a, a young woman looking for her brother who has gone missing at sea. Then we have the Gormenghast Trilogy by Morgan Peak. This is one of my favorite series of all time. Um, it's about a castle, um, and sometimes about the people who live in it. Um, then we have The Bell Jar by Sylvia Plath. I listened to this on audiobook. I highly suggest that. It's the one I listened to is ma narrated by Maggie Gyllenhaal. It's about a woman um, dealing with depression. Then we have this Poe, and it's in this cloth cover. The unabridged Edgar Allan Poe. We get into uh, the Discworld books here. We have Hogfather, which is the Christmas book where death becomes Santa Claus, or their version of Santa Claus called the Hogfather. Uh, we have The Color of Magic, The Light Fantastic, and then the Witches series, or the beginning of it anyways, Equal Rights, and uh, Weird Sisters, and then one of the standalones, this is probably my all-time favorite Discworld novel, um, Small Gods, which is about religion. The Complete Discworld Atlas, which came with a giant map, which is stored somewhere else, but uh, it's just about the disc world. The Crying of Lot 49 by Thomas Pynchon, which is a great uh, postmodern novel about who knows what. <laughs> then we have Mort, um, which is uh, by Robert Rapino, and this is like what happens if animals were given intelligence and then waged war against humanity. Then we have Nino Ricci's Life of the Saints, and this is about a young boy growing up in Italy. Um, just a quiet story, um, but very um, good Canadian author, of course. Here we have This Is My Country, What's Yours by Noah Richler, a literary atlas of Canada. So basically he travels across Canada talking to um, different Canadian authors and um, looking at how the history of the place, um, not the history of the people necessarily, but the history of like the the ground and the cities and the, the forests and how that all affects um, Writing. Geography. I was going to call it geology and I knew that wasn't the right word. Geography. Then we have Meg Rossoff, What I Was. This is one of my all-time favorite books by her. Um, how How I Am Now is wrapped up. Um, so it's missing off my shelf. But What I Was is a great quiet story about friendship. Then we have my two copies of um, the Harry Potter, the first 
uh, one and the second one in the adult covers, these black and white ones. This is how I first read Harry Potter um, and my copy <laughs> literally fell to pieces like the pages were crumbling because I read it so many times. And so when I found these two I was just like, score, I gotta have them. Midnight's Children by Selman Rushdie, classic uh, Indian literature there. This is the Wayside series <laughs> by Louis Satcher, who's known for writing holes. Um, so Wayside School's Falling Down, Wayside School Gets a Little Stranger, and Sideways Stories from Wayside School. These are great middle grade books about like really weird happenings at this school. The Anton um, Saint-Exupéry collection, um, which has Little Prince, Airman's Odyssey, and uh, the Airman's Odyssey is a trilogy which contains Wind, S Wind Sand and Stars, Night Flight, and Flight to Arras. Um, and the Little Prince, of course. Um, and I read, I read the Little Prince, but not in this edition. And I've read Wind, Sand, and Stars, and it is, it is beautiful. It is a beautiful story. And then, of course, we have my copies of the Little Prince. Here we have the English copy that most people know, and then I have a copy of it in French here in a smaller little edition. Then we have The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. This is the iconic cover, and uh, Nausea by Jean-Paul Sartre. Um, uh, just a philosophical classic, but it's it's done in the form of uh, fiction. Moving on, uh, <laughs> I have this little illustrated, obviously abridged edition of the Count of Monte Cristo, um, done with illustrations. I think this is done for um, kids. Okay, and then we have the first two books in Jerusalem by Alan Moore. I'm actually reading the third right now. Um, so here we have book one, The Burrows. It is a series of interlinked short stories about people living um, in uh, New Hampton, in the boroughs. A man's soul is about a young boy who dies and goes to the upstairs. Um, and their version of uh, the upstairs, the heaven, is really cool. Uh, then we have The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. I listened to this on audio and I really want to reread it because it was just a very beautiful book. Uh, then we have Sweet Snow by Alexander J. Motol, a novel of the Ukrainian famine of 1933 uh, known as the Hlodmer, um, imposed famine by uh, the Stalin government and um, we follow two people as they um, starve to death. Um, Never Cry Wolf by Farley Mowat is a nonfiction about him um, following a family of wolves. And then we have The Dead Kid Detective Agency, and this is The Dead Kid Detective Agency. Um, dial M for Morna. Um, Loyalist to a Fault, and um, Connect the Scots. And they are all about um, October Schwartz, who accidentally resurrects a bunch of dead kids, um, and they go around solving um, not crime. Well, yeah, well, they also commit crimes. But, you know, they go around solving mysteries. Um, and then each of these ones, um, they have the overarching mystery, and then each of them solves how they died. Um, and it's really cool. They also deal with a lot of Canadian history. Like, here we have the Loyalists um, from the American um, Revolutionary War, um, who came over to Canada, and we have one of the boys who died in the war there. And this one is about the Underground Railroad, and this girl was murdered, um, and dealing with modern day racism as well. Um, Tia Mutanji's uh, Shut Up Your Pretty is about a young girl who came over from uh, Congo uh, to Canada. Um, and it's told in a series of like short stories, but they're all about the one, the one person. Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov. I've seen people talk about this, and I just want to reassure you that it's not promoting pedophilia. It is much more complicated than that. It, but it is one of the most beautifully written books you will ever read. And then I have this beautiful copy of A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness, which has a lot of personal um, ties to me. Um, and this is one of the really nice illustrated editions. And there's a bunch of additional information in here as well. I was so happy when I found this at the thrift store, actually. Uh, one of my favorite books from last year, A Gathering of Waters by Bernice L. McFadden, which is about a town called Money, Mississippi, and the black families that live there. And then we have David A. Neal's um, The Way Home, um, and he's an artist. Um, this is a uh, ceremonial mask he made, um, and it's basically just full of his art, and uh, very straightforwardly talking about his experience as an artist. Sleeping Gods series uh, by Sylvain Nouvelle. Um, we have book one here without the dust jacket because I suck at losing, because I suck at keeping them. <laughs> um, and this is uh, about giant robots found on Earth. Um, that's book one. 
book two is Waking Gods. Um, I actually think I'd probably prefer it without the uh, disc jacket. So let's just take that off and just have it like that. I think that's the cooler um, <laughs> cover. And I'm, I'm wanting to get the hardcover for the third book as well. Then we have Ringworld by Larry Niven, a classic science fiction. A Sabriel by Garth Nix. And this is a great um, uh, fantasy, classic fantasy. <laughs> then we have this really weird book called Vert by Jeff Noon. I think I read this in 2019. And uh, Vert is a drug where you get different colored feathers and you tickle the back of your throat and it sends you into a virtual world. Uh, but it's a drug, so weird things happen. Uh, then we have Animal Firm by George Orwell in this nice little copy here. Um, oh, and 1984 is missing because I'm reading that one um, this year. Metamorphosis by Ovid. Then we have The Collected Works of Grey Owl, who's an interesting person. He was a Scottish man who um, just passed himself off as uh, an indigenous person and was, I, I believed he was um, adopted. Um, into um, some indigenous communities. Um, and so he wrote a lot of nature writing. Uh, Bridge to Terabithia by Catherine Patterson, that childhood classic that, you know, destroyed us all. Um, also by uh, Catherine Patterson, Jacob Have I Loved. Um, less well known. Um, this is a little girl, and I believe it's her twin sister, and her twin sister has life so much easier. Um, it's just, you know, her dealing with that and, and growing up. It's a very beautiful book. And uh, then we have this, I went to York University and they were fond of very handing these type things out to us. And this is just um, Studies in Literature of the U.S. Poe um, by Dr. Brett Zimmerman. Um, and it's just, um, most of this actually is um, a, uh, whatchamacallit? What's it called? Just a, a glossary of literary terms, actually. Um, but yeah, I like having that um, still. And again, in the interest of keeping these videos under a certain time, I am going to end this um, section of the shelf here, and the next video will take over there. Um, thank you very much for watching part three of my bookshelf tour.